guys, so this is part three of your notes on the equilibrium constants. Uh, we have two sections left, that's part three and four. Part three is basically about what do these equilibrium constants mean, and then part four is going to be how do I know which way the reaction's gonna go depending on how I manipulate the reaction. All right, so let's start with part three, which is what these equilibrium constants mean. So when you're using equilibrium constants, you can do two things with them. You can predict the position of the equilibrium, or you can calculate the concentrations of equilibrium. So part two, we did a problem where we calculated the concentration of equilibrium. So what I wanna do is I wanna focus more on the position of the equilibrium than actually calculating the concentration because that's what part two was all about. All right, so we talk about positions of equilibrium. Please remember that you're gonna use the value of uh, KEQ, AKA KC, same thing, to determine which way that the equilibrium is gonna shift. So there are three things that you have to keep in mind. Uh, when you get your equilibrium constant value, whatever the number of the value is will tell you which way your reaction is going to shift or what direction it's going to move toward. All right, so when we identify which way that the reaction shifts, we're gonna say to the products, we're gonna say to the reactants, or we're gonna say neither. So the three situations you guys need to know about is basically your equilibrium constant number, what it means if it's above a certain number, if it's at a certain number, or it's lower than a certain number. The number that we're gonna use to figure things out is gonna be one. So if your equilibrium constant is greater than one, which is going to be, for the most part, really, really big, all right? Now, if you wanna think about this, I put the equation down here, your equilibrium constant equation down here at the bottom, because you can look at it and that will tell you what's going on, right? Because you know from part two that your equilibrium constant is going to be the concentrations of the products over the concentration of the reactants, correct? So that if you know that your um, equilibrium constant is really, really big, then that means that you know the number on top is going to be really big, right? Because it's in the numerator. So in that case, if the um, equilibrium constant is greater than one, equilibrium is gonna favor the products. What this means is that there is gonna be a higher concentration of products then there will be a concentration of reactants, which makes sense based on the actual expression. Because if the products are on the top and the reactants are on the bottom, the bigger number is gonna be on the top, which signifies the products. When we talk about the um, second part, if the equilibrium constant is about one, the equilibrium will favor neither the products nor the reactants. What that basically is gonna mean is that the concentration of the products and the reactants will be approximately equal. Now I say approximately because sometimes it'll be one, some, some, but sometimes it might be close to two, um, could go as far as let's say 2.3. Um, in that case, we would probably say that the um, equilibrium will favor neither one of them, the products or the reactants. For the third case, if the equilibrium constant is smaller than one, then the equilibrium is gonna favor the reactants. So if you take a look at the equation, that makes sense again, right? If you have a bigger number on the bottom, right? That means that you're gonna probably have a smaller number than one, all right? So in that case, the reactant number is going to be bigger than the product number, which means that equilibrium is gonna favor the products. And what that means is that the concentration of the reactants will be more than the concentration of the products. So I know some of you are looking around like, I don't, I don't really know what that means. Break it down for me. All right, so let's break it down. You guys have five examples that are on your worksheet. Uh, I think it's on your note worksheet. All it gives you is the equilibrium constant and it says, hey, what's gonna be favored, the reactants or the products or neither? So let's take a look. Our first one is 2.1 times 10 to the 11th. That is a huge number, right? So if you look back on the previous screen, if your equilibrium constant is greater than one, AKA really, really big, it's gonna favor the products. So what you will put here is because it is a lot greater than one, then that means that our reaction is going to favor 
the product side, okay? Right here in the notes. All right, if we take a look at the next one, once again, we have an exponent that is a really big number. So that is obviously the same situation. It is a lot greater than one. It's gonna favor the product side. If we take a look at the 2.2 times 10 to the minus two, it's a really, really, really small number. All right, so if you go back to your rules, it says that if the equilibrium constant is much smaller than one, then equilibrium is gonna favor the reactants. So for the 2.2 times 10 to the minus two, we are definitely gonna be favoring the reactants. Then for example number four, which is your equilibrium constant is 8.5 times 10 to the minus 10. That's even a smaller number than this number up here, so it's definitely gonna favor the uh, reactants. And then for this one, we have a number that is around 2.3, right? It's not overly huge. It's not really, really small. So, I mean, there are two ways to go about this. If you are a stickler for that it is greater than one, then you're going to say that it favors the product side. The chemist in me would say that, eh, I mean, it probably doesn't favor, 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 favor either side, but if you put that it favored the products, I couldn't necessarily mark you wrong, but I would say as a chemist that it would probably favor neither. So hopefully that makes sense on how to use the equilibrium constants to figure out um, what side is favored. All right, so over here, I just wrote down all the answers so you guys will have them. So like I said, the first is gonna favor the product really, really large over one. The second is also going to favor the products really, really large over one. These two right here were at a minus two and a minus 10. Really, really small numbers. Remember, you're moving the decimal point back, right? So it makes it a really, really small number. And then at the bottom, I wouldn't say that you could, you could say that it's the products, obviously, because it's greater than one. But if you put that in favor of neither, I would give you that as well. All right. So. Um, let's talk about how to do these calculations of concentrations, right? So up here we have a problem. So this is the second part of how we use the equilibrium constants. And this example is actually on your worksheet, so you can work it through with me. So we have an equilibrium constant for the following reaction is 65, and then it gives you a temperature at 425 degrees Celsius. Here is what the equation looks like. First thing you always want to do is you want to make sure that it's balanced, okay? Obviously, it's a reversible equation, which is basically pointed out to you by the double-headed arrow. The question it's asking you is, if the mixture contains 0 0.30 molar of iodic acid and 0 0.020 molar of iodine, what is the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen. Now, what you need to remember is that just like any other word problem, you need to read the problems, make sure you know what they're asking you for. All the other problems that we've been doing, I had been asking you for the equilibrium constant. No, it gives you the equilibrium constant and it's asking you for the concentration of hydrogen. Okay, so let's put up our little reminder of what our um, equilibrium constant is supposed to look like. And then you basically want to check your states, right? Because remember, in these equations, solid and liquid does not affect your equilibrium. So it looks like we're good and every single uh, element or chemical is involved. Uh, hydrogen is a gas. Iodine is a gas. Iodotic acid, that's, an, that's a gas. So that means that all three of them are going to be in our equilibrium constant. So how you would start writing it out is uh, the equilibrium constant equals, now remember, it is going to be the products, the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. Our product is iodotic acid. Our reactants are gonna be H2 and I2. And then remember, you're gonna raise them to whatever the coefficient is. So here is the concentration of our product, which is HI. The coefficient is two, so it is going to be squared. All right, and then it's gonna be divided by the concentration of our reactants. This should be H2, so I'll fix that before I upload it for you guys, but it's basically gonna be H2 raised to its coefficient, which is one, and then I2, which is raised to its coefficient, which is one, 
All right. So this is how you should set up your equilibrium constant. And now we're just going to start plugging numbers in. So we know that the equilibrium constant is 65. So that's going to go right there. We know from the problem that the concentration of HI is 0 0.030. So we're going to put that in. Don't forget the square, please. Okay, because remember, our coefficient is 2. So we need to square that. Down below, we're going to have the concentration of the reactants. H2 is what we're looking for, so I'm just going to leave it as brackets, concentration of H2. That will be raised to the 1, right, because there is a 1 here for the coefficient. And then it's going to be times the concentration of iodine, which in the problem is 0 0.020 molar. So you're just going to plug that into your value. And now some of you guys are looking at it saying, I don't know how to solve it. The best way to solve this problem is to cross multiply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 65 and I'm going to multiply it by the denominator over on this side. So I will get 65 times H2, which is what I'm looking for, times 0 0.020 molar is going to equal 0 0.030. Don't forget the square, please. And then you're just going to solve it like a normal equation, right? So basically, um, stepwise, you're going to square, you're going to get a number, and you're going to divide the square by these two numbers, and then you'll leave hydrogen, the concentration of hydrogen by itself. So let's do it. I squared it. So the number of uh, 0 0.030 squared is 0 0.0009. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the 65 and the 0 0.020. I'm going to divide this number by both of those numbers, and you should come up with a number that is 0 0.000692 molar. Switch it into scientific notation. One, two, three, four. Okay, so then it ends up being 6.92 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. And that is the answer for your equilibrium concentration of hydrogen. So hopefully that was helpful, and now you know how to do two things. How it predicts which way the reaction is going to favor, and then also you can figure out the or calculate the concentrations of all of your compounds in the equation that fit the bill. Remember, gas is an aqueous, no solids, no liquids. And then you can find the value or the concentration of anything else that is in your equation. So hopefully that was helpful. The last part we have to do is part four, so I'll come back with that part of the video. And uh, hopefully by the end of that, you guys will be pros in equilibrium.